Hi guys, it is another, what do they call it, red flag wildfire warning day here <clears throat> in the collapse of global industrial civilization here in the great state of Texas where I guess I am on day six of uh, having corona panic and I, <clears throat> I can now officially confirm Corona panic is a bad hair day. All right. Uh, this is six bad hair days in a row. <coughs> and uh, anyway, so uh, it's glad to finally be able to confirm Corona panic is a bad hair day. But compared to the pandemic coming down the pike, what I am going through this week uh, is a Sunday walk in the park. <clears throat> but I'm not here to talk about Corona Panic. We're here, I guess we're here, uh, what are we here to talk about? We're, we're, we're going to go over to Somalia for this story. So what I started out to do <coughs> this morning <coughs> was actually... I was surveying these news stories about, uh, <coughs> you know, how <clears throat> particularly the war in Ukraine and climate change and all of these various things uh, jacking up the price of food and how the these massive increases in the most essential staples like wheat and corn, uh, mainly wheat, <clears throat> they're talking can wreak havoc uh, on these <coughs> food aid programs from the United Nations and Oxfam and all of these various, <clears throat> I guess there's USA, but anyway, you know what I'm talking about, all of these food aid programs where uh, basically people in rich countries feed people in poor countries starving to death uh, for various reasons. And of course, uh, climate change being one of the reasons, I guess. So, uh, <coughs> in my research of all those stories, I decided to change my focus of today's rant and and I just want some help guys <clears throat> I admit my brain is a little bit foggy so maybe my normal razor sharp <clears throat> uh, ability to use some you know uh, discernment critical thinking and just the most basic logic and third grade math skills Maybe my brain is foggy from uh, from having corona panic. Uh, so you tell me, am I out of line? So we're going to center in on this one from Somalia. <clears throat> this is right here on today's mainstream media. I guess just from Yahoo News itself. <clears throat> Headlined. 350,000 Somali children at risk of death from climate change linked drought. Okay, 350,000 children in Somalia, <clears throat> I guess right now are at risk of dying of starvation from climate change linked drought. I'm just going to read this story, and uh, then we're going to come back <clears throat> and uh, do a little bit of logic and critical thinking and basic math. <clears throat> right. The United Nations is warning that 350,000 children in Somalia could die due to starvation 
unless the world rallies to provide food aid to the impoverished African nation that is in the grips <clears throat> of a fourth straight year of crippling drought made worse by climate change. So we're so this has been going on for four years. Uh, this is Adam Abdamula of the UN, <clears throat> you know, with this food aid program, quote, <coughs> as we speak now, 1.4 million children under five years of age, <clears throat> okay, as we speak now, 1.4 million children under five years of age, otherwise saying the 1.4 million children who were all born since Somalia went under the drought are severely malnourished. And if we don't step up our intervention, it is projected that 350,000 of them will perish by the summer of this year. The situation cannot be more dire than that. <clears throat> so, I call on all those who are able to contribute, including the Somali diaspora, the business community, the traditional and non-traditional donors, everyone, to act and to act now, close quote, <clears throat> three years of successive drought have left Somalia's largest river, the Juba, almost entirely dry. The lack of water has affected an estimated four and a half million people, many of whom make their living as farmers. Uh, <clears throat> and they're talking, you know, interviewing these uh, ranchers about how all their livestock are dying and, uh, and whatnot. Uh, in this recently released report, the IPCC warned that climate change and an ongoing La Nina, a climate pattern resulting in drier weather for the Horn of Africa, were to blame for the drought and soaring temperatures baking the region. In a nation that has endured decades of political violence <coughs> and extreme poverty, the effects of climate change are being acutely felt by children, said Abdamula, already in this country, 70% <clears throat> of school age children are not attending school. In just one state in Juba, the drought has led to the closure of 40 schools, and that is going to be the trend. Uh, more than 700, close quote, more than 700,000 people have already been displaced due to the successive years of drought, forced to walk barren roads littered with animal carcasses to try to make it to population centers in search of food, water, and shelter. And now, making matters worse, Russia's invasion of Ukraine, where many African countries get their wheat and cooking oil, has caused food prices to skyrocket. This is Cindy McCain from the U.S. representative to the U.N. Food Agency in Rome. Quote, the Food and Agricultural Organization estimates that as many as 13 million more people worldwide will be pushed into food insecurity as a result of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. The truth of the matter is Putin's war forces us to take from the hungry to feed the starving 
as long as Russia continues its brutal campaign, innocent people are going to pay the price, close quote. <clears throat> the combination of food and water scarcity and high prices for imported wheat means that Somalia is looking at, quote, a risk of famine, Abdamullah said. <clears throat> With its Somalia humanitarian response plan, the UN is looking to raise nearly $1.5 billion to provide humanitarian assistance to five and a half million of the most vulnerable people in Somalia. To date, however, it is just it has taken in just fifty-six million dollars or four percent of the total. Uh, the problems are not limited to Somalia. According to the International Committee for the Red Cross, at least one quarter, twenty-five percent of Africa's population now faces food insecurity due to factors like drought and higher prices. 25% of Africans looking at food insecurity because of drought and inflation. <clears throat> Climate change is quickly becoming a constant threat for the continent. At the UN Climate Change Conference in Glasgow, industrialized nations continued to grapple with the reality, the reality that Africa specifically was poised to bear the brunt of a problem that was not of its own making. This is what we're going to center in on. So let me uh, repeat. <clears throat> Industrialized nations continue to grapple with the reality that Africa specifically was poised or is poised to bear the brunt of a problem that was not of its own making. This is a reality, according to the mainstream media. <clears throat> While the nations at COP26 reaffirmed a pledge that would see developed nations provide $100 billion annually to developing ones to help transform their economies and meet greenhouse gas emissions targets, the delivery of that money has fallen short. Uh, <clears throat> even more problematic is an agreement for rich nations to provide, quote, loss and damage funding for poorer ones to deal with the cost of catastrophic events linked to climate change, such as the ongoing drought in, you know, in Somalia, of course, the dire situation in Somalia is not an isolated one. As global temperatures continue to rise, the IPCC warns, quote, by 2030, in the next eight years, half the continent of Africa could be displaced as a result of climate change. Close quote. Okay, guys, there is so much that we could dive into here. <clears throat> of course, we're going to start with the word that you will never see. <coughs> that you will never see anywhere in this story on Somalia and Africa. And that word, of course, is overpopulation. The fact that the population of Africa has pretty much doubled in the past 20 years, or at least uh, Somalia 
that Africa has the highest growth rate uh, on the planet. Uh, <clears throat> And, uh, well, uh, and, and what are they, I think they're still saying that three out of four people uh, being born on this planet in the 21st century will be born in Sub-Saharan Africa. But we're going to uh, center in to the reality according to the mainstream media and the little lefty uh, bleeding heart snowflakes, the reality that, uh, that Africa specifically was poised to bear the brunt of a problem that was not of its own making. Okay, so I guess if the problem is climate change. If that is the problem, then I guess if you consider the reality that climate change is the fundamental, the underlying, and pretty much sounds like the only problem, uh, then I guess you can make that statement. Okay. However, if you are anyone with a brain, meaning any sort of ecologist, you know climate change is not the underlying problem in Africa. It is overpopulation. The third rail word that you will not see in this article. So anyway, so it's somewhere in here they talked about what was it? The most vulnerable five and a half million. So let, let's start with 350,000. So <clears throat> what are they saying? Uh, as far as this 350,000 of these children, every one of which, according to, the, to their definition, was were born since Somalia went into this drought. So uh, it's into this five-year drought. So what if they were uh, any three-year-old being born in Somalia? Well, well, the, the drought had already been going on for two years. But uh, so are they saying that if those 350,000 children had never been born, huh, that they would not be facing starvation, that if the population of Somalia was 350,000 lower than it is, would there not be 350,000? But let's go all the way to five and a half million. So they're, they're talking about the five and a half million most vulnerable people in Somalia. The five and a half million. So what, what I'm reading here is that <clears throat> if there were six million fewer people in Somalia, again, guys, it might be because of my corona panic of a funneled brain, all right, uh, that there's something wrong with my logic and my math skills here. So correct me if I'm wrong. The way I am reading it, <clears throat> if there were six million fewer people in Somalia, we wouldn't have five and a half of these super, five and a half million of these super vulnerable people. So we're going to spend one minute trying to figure out uh, what did they call it one more time? The reality the reality that Africa is suffering from a problem not of its own making. So what is the population of Somalia today? Fit well in 2020 it was 15.89 million. I'm assuming it's 16 million. We're gonna call 
16 million people in Somalia in 2020. What, how many people were living in Somalia in the year 2000? 16 million people there today. How many people, what was the population of Somalia in the year 2000? How about 8.9 million? We're going to call it 9 million. <clears throat> million people in 2000, well, less than nine, less than nine million people in the year 2000, 16 million people in the year 2022. So 16 million minus 6 million is 10 million. So it sounds to me like if the population of Somalia was 10 million people, they would be a lot better poised to handle problems of overshoot. And if the uh, population of Somalia was where it was in 2020, they would have a hell of a lot better chance. So. <clears throat> Do the people of, and you could do this for pretty much any country in Sub-Saharan Africa, okay? They, they, they centered on Somalia, so I did. <clears throat> do you or do you not agree? <clears throat> I guess this will be whether or not you are a bleeding heart, little snowflake. Uh, does Somalia and the rest of Sub-Saharan Africa bear any responsibility for this uh, famine? Do they bear any responsibility? Does it have, is there anything that Somalians and every other African nation, that, that, that's individuals in these countries, what could they have done to head this off at the pass. What consumer and lifestyle choice could your average Somalian have made uh, 20 years ago where they would not be in this position today? But no, they are victims. Get it? They're victims. They are born into victimhood they were their victim parents bred them into victimhood uh they're they are it's pretty much a a nation or a continent of victims that uh they, they are completely totally uh innocent helpless victims and it, it is up to the rest of the world to literally feed them and the UN wonders why their uh, <coughs> their target is 96 percent shy trying to raise money to feed starving sub-saharan africans whose uh, population has pretty much doubled since the year 2000 and why we have this thing is called donor fatigue donor fatigue where people just after after you give money you give money you give money you give money to fix a problem and you find out year after year after year after year the problem only gets worse and worse and worse <clears throat> and so you stop giving money and let God or Mother Nature sort it out. And anyway,
that's my uh, <clears throat> that's my uh, third grade math and logic 101 lesson in discernment and critical thinking and how to read between the lines of the mainstream media. But with that, I've got to wrap up today's chronicle of the collapse and uh, <clears throat> go hack up a big ball of no telling what out of my lungs. Anyway, get out there and enjoy hacking up gobs of phlegm out of your lungs while you still can. Bye, guys.